In this video, we are going to go over the side angle side inequality theorem, also known as the hinge theorem. SAS inequality theorem, otherwise known as the hinge theorem, T38 says, that if two sides of a triangle are congruent to two sides of another triangle and the included angle of the first triangle, so that's the angle between the two sides specified, if that angle has a greater measure than the other angle on the other triangle, so the angle that corresponds, then the third side of the first triangle is longer than the third side of the second triangle. Let me explain this theorem using a picture. Here I have two separate triangles. This side is congruent to this side, and this side is congruent to this side. And I know that because I measured it out when I drew the triangles. So this theorem says since these two sides are congruent to two other sides on another triangle, and if this first triangle that I drew this angle is clearly greater than the second triangle. So this has the bigger angle and this has the smaller angle. Well this theorem says that since this has the bigger angle, then this side is the longer side. And this side, opposite the shorter angle, would be the shorter side. Let's go ahead and prove this and I'll warn you ahead of time that the proof is very long. Here I have two triangles, ABC and XYZ. Side AB is congruent to side XY and side AC is congruent to side XZ. Also, the measure of angle A is greater than the measure of angle X. So we know that angle A is greater than the measure of angle X. So we need to prove that this third side, BC, is larger than YZ. Let's start with what we're given. We're given triangle ABC and triangle XYZ such that segment AB is congruent to segment XY and segment AC is congruent to segment XZ. Also note that the measure of angle A is greater than the measure of angle X. Now let's go ahead and add a segment to our first triangle ABC. Let's make that segment so that it's congruent to XY and has the same angle measure as X. So we added this segment AR such that RAC was equal to the measure of angle X and segment AR is congruent to segment XY. So there's going to be two cases for this. Our first case is that R falls or lies on segment BC and that's what I've drawn here. Right away we have side angle side that is congruent to side angle side. By the side angle side postulate we can say that triangle ARC is congruent to triangle XYZ. And since those two triangles are congruent then by the CPCTC which says corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent we'll have that RC is congruent to YZ. By CPCTC, RC is congruent to YZ, so the length RC is equivalent to the length YZ, and that's by the definition of congruent segments. But RC is part of a smaller segment, BC, so let's go ahead and use the segment addition postulate to represent BC.
Also, by the segment addition postulate, BC equals RC plus RB. And because BC equals RC plus RB, by the definition of inequality, we can say that BC is greater than RC. Therefore, by the definition of inequality, BC is greater than RC, and by substitution, since we said that RC was equivalent to YC, we can sub YZ in for RC and get that BC is greater than YZ. And that is what we needed to prove. But that's only for case 1. Let's look at case 2, where R does not lie on BC. Let's draw that out real quick. Notice that my AR is still the same length, so AR is going to be congruent to XY still, and this angle RAC is still congruent to my angle X. But AB and BC are in a different position. Also note that my measure of angle A, so BAC, is still greater than my measure of angle X. Y, X, Z. So everything that was given in this first part remains the same. Now, let's work on our separate case. We're going to create a point S on the intersection of segment AR and segment BC. So that would be this point here is S. We're also going to create a segment AT such that T, so the point T, lies on segment BC and the angle BAT is congruent to the angle TAR. So this point T has to be placed so that the angle BAT is congruent to the angle TAR. Basically, this segment AT is an angle bisector of BAR. So there's my point T, and I have that BAT is congruent to TAR. Remember that AR was congruent to XY. And we said that when we originally drew the segment AR. Well, since AR is congruent to XY, and XY was congruent to AB, then by the transitive property we can say that AR is congruent to AB. So AR is congruent to XY and XY is congruent to AB, then segment AR is congruent to segment AB. We also know that the segment we created AT is congruent to itself by the reflexive property. And look what we have now. We have side angle side congruent to side angle side. So therefore, the triangle BAT is congruent to the triangle TAR. And that's by the side angle side postulate. So since this triangle BAT is congruent to the triangle TAR, now by CPCTC, segment BT is congruent to segment TR, which means BT is equivalent to TR. So this BT is congruent to TR. Also let's remember by side angle side again, the triangle ARC is congruent to triangle XYZ. And since those two triangles are congruent, by CPCTC again, RC 
is congruent to YZ. And I'm switching over to a different color for new congruent segments. And that's so I don't have to have many little dashes across this line. So just as I explained it, segment RC is congruent to segment YZ, which means that RC is equal to YZ. Now with the segments we added, you notice that we have a new triangle, C, R, T. And by the triangle inequality theorem, we can say that TC plus TR is going to be greater than RC. So we have triangle CRT where TC plus TR is greater than RC. But remember, up here we showed that BT was equal to TR. So let's substitute BT in for TR. But what exactly is TC plus BT? Looking back at our picture, the segment TC plus the segment BT is the entire segment BC, and that's by the segment addition postulate. So now let's substitute BC in for the TC plus BT in the inequality. So now we have that BC is greater than RC. But remember, when we used the CPCTC, we said that RC was congruent to YZ, so RC was equal to YZ. So now let's substitute YZ in for RC. So again by substitution, BC is greater than YZ. And since we proved that both cases are true, we have proven what we needed to prove. That if two sides of a triangle are congruent to two sides of another triangle, and the included angle of the first triangle is greater than the included angle of the second triangle, then that third side of the first triangle is greater than the third side of the second triangle.